Thank you to Thank you to Patrick over at uh, High Impact Motorsports for letting me borrow a small wrench so I could get this off. Um, hey guys, don't forget that this is a reverse thread, meaning a um, you know left is tighten and right is loosen. I'm not saying that I. Uh, might have tried for a solid five, six, seven minutes. Maybe almost tore my uh, vice off of my, uh, whatchamacallit, to uh, only to realize that I had been doing it wrong because um, I'm a moron. I didn't do that. That's, that's a hypothetical situation that I did not find myself in. So, uh, once you get that done, just sort of rotate this thing around to take off the nut. I think this is one of these nuts where it just because you're using such a big wrench, it feels there we go. Maybe feels like you're probably fine. You could go all the way around, but. There's a little bit of boogering on some of these threads right here. But beyond that, a ton. Okay, so now that's gone. You want to be careful on these because there is a, a little slot that holds, or a little cylinder that holds this in place. So we will clean up my workspace again. So we can get that done real quick. Okay. Now we're going to take this off, but I actually think I have the right size of wrench for that. But it is smaller than that. This is a 32. It's much smaller than that. We're going to put that back. Uh, this I had an old head bolt off the me or off the Miata, off the uh, Figaro, and so I cut or I cut the head off of it so I could use that. This is Okay, now, once we've done that, I'll look for any kind of like snap ring or something. I don't see one. I don't think there is one. You can see I'm just using this puller. I'm using this puller and I'm being cautious not to like strip the gears or put too much pressure, but as you can see as I'm tightening, you can see this bearing and the gear just sort of moving off of the shaft. So off they go into the wild. Again, it's almost 
loose enough that I could use. Never mind. All right, so here's this bearing off and this gear off. Okay. I don't know if that's how that normally looks. But fifth gear counter gears off. Ooh, ooh. I need to find a good way to uh, measure these. Um, give me one second. Uh, so I'm trying to do a good job of labeling. So over here, we'll put fifth. This is going to be for both the counter shaft and main gear, which, if I look closely, has this gear synchros that. I don't know if that looks. Oh, oh, oh. And a roller bearing that I took off with it and just dropped on the floor. This roller bearing doesn't feel very, very smooth. <coughs> Is there any difference between the inner and the outer? to drop on the floor there were these two um, pieces here three there's three of them They want to keep that on. Fifth in reverse. Gotta see how to get this one off, whether I drive it off with this or this all comes out together. Alright. So I need to get this gear off and I need to pull her on it. In order to do that, I need to take this off so I can actually reach it. So
What did I just break? Oh. I don't know where the other piece went. Oh, that is part of that. Maximum capability of these cheap snap ring pliers. Mother truck. That hurt. Sometimes crappy snap-on or snap ring pliers don't work, so here we are, stuck. But again, these snap rings are just a pain in the butt. Um, they're much thicker than my rings were good enough for, and so it took me a long time to get this one out. Now that that's out, I have enough space where I can get on the back of this with a puller and try to slowly pull this out. If that doesn't work, I'm going to go and use a hopefully a hydraulic press tomorrow to press out. Uh, this main shaft, uh, but I got that off and I kept the um, reverse idler thrust washer, the idler gear bearing, the reverse um, idler gear, as well as um, the back thrust washer. Those were all uh, here on this shaft. And so, and I'm referencing the five speed transmission um, paperwork here. So now I've got that off. I've got the fifth gear off as well. I've got the reverse uh, main gear off and they're all labeled and in their own bags. So that way I don't lose them and I don't misplace them or put them with the wrong part. First of all, it's amazing what metal can do to skin. Just cut you right up. I went out and used a press to push the rest of the parts the way they need to go. It worked out so much better. Um, if you don't have access to a press, I suggest calling around, figuring out a friend of yours that does have a press and use that. So um, I've got that out, got the uh, needle bearing that's here in the input shaft sort of still there as well. Um, all of it is taken apart. I'll be cleaning everything up and seeing the way that it works. So right input shaft uh, slides onto here. Um, here's the counter shaft. Um, that spins around and goes back the other way again not seeing anything that's just like out of this world disgusting or messed up so we'll take a close look at the shafts or gears moving forward and see what we can do to move forward uh, talking with a, a buddy of mine that runs a shop uh, he mentioned something about maybe getting a um, different input shaft in fourth gear and it would change the acceleration and capability there. Now I'm looking into it and seeing what I think. It might be a fun um, project to do something similar to that. But I need to go put a Band-Aid on this um, and go out for the wife's birthday. So uh, with a press, the last part of this took less than 30 minutes. And so I would strongly suggest not beating on a ha at it with a hammer on this stuff and just getting the right tools. But I didn't want to buy a press, and I made the right decision. Okay, so we're going to start moving to the next part, which is removing the rest of the gears here off of the main shaft, input shaft, and continuing to sort of catalog them into place. So here we have fourth gear. I'll go ahead and try to clean up my space a little bit. This happens a lot in projects where you just sort of 
you let it get away from you for one day and then all of a sudden it's just like why is everything so just incredibly messy and so i've got a lot a huge pile of stuff over here i'm going to continue to operate by having that this pile out of the way so um the Okay, so this is the overdrive and fifth gear synchronizer uh, that I removed um, with like the help of a press. Uh, this is the insert retainer um, that I took out. Needle bearing and then two of the bearings that I've removed from the part so far. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove first gear. And this is the idler shaft or the reverse um, idler shaft that's out of the way and obviously or and the bolts that held on the center plate here so those are all taken off to get them out of the way we have the fifth synchro and then some of the fifth gear this looks to be I'll have to figure out where that one goes. This is, I think, one of the fifth gear um, retaining. Yeah, it's just the washer that goes um, on the other side of the overdrive gear, overdrive gear bushing. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in a baggie uh, to ensure that we don't sort of mix that up with some of the others. So we'll go ahead and put fifth, and then we'll write this is the overdrive gear bushing, so OD gear bushing, OD washer. It's just called a washer on the factory service manual. Synchronizer hub, and or the yeah insert retainer, excuse me, and then the oh crap, it says pay attention to its direction. I didn't necessarily pay attention to its direction, so let's hope that doesn't come back to bite me. I'll be able to figure it out, I hope. I hope I took enough pictures. Now, one side is shiny, one side is dull, and so we'll be able to hopefully figure out why it is um, the shape that it is. So uh, we'll go ahead and put all this into this baggie. So, notice that this washer has a little hole here for the, there's a ball, should be a ball somewhere along here that I fortunately don't see, so we'll figure, try to figure that out where that's at. Um, But this was with these. So now we're going to be taking off first gear items. So let's go ahead and grab another baggie and write first on it. So we have this inner washer. I'm saying this as much for your benefit as my benefit, um, mainly for my benefit. And I'll have to go back and look to see. Uh, there's divots here. Those divots go one way over another. And once again, I didn't pay close enough attention to figure out which way it went. So, first gear and the synchronizer. And two needle bearing. Out. Okay. So two needle bearings. Or excuse me, a single needle bearing, just double rollers. And first gear. to 
just slide this needle bearing into this here so as not to, not to put stress on it. And then the synchro, slide it in here. Like so, okay, now we'll go ahead and seal that up. Now we'll go ahead and grab another bag, and we'll call this second. Notice that the piece here that or the, sh the first gear bushing is still here on this, so we're actually going to have to sort of go like this. And we'll use this, just a tiny bit of force and see whether we can, oh, oh, I just dropped a shift insert, or so, uh, so synchro insert, so let's pause for a second. Okay, so here's what fell down. These are the, uh, the shifting insert, so we'll go ahead and put that Shifting collar is here. Like that. We got one, two, three. Okay, now we have to be careful and ensure that we grab the springs associated here. So one. Two and three. Real quick. These springs don't have any um, balls under them, so we're good there. So we'll set this off to the side. Now we'll use this to tap this down. I just pushed, I didn't actually tap. Okay, so here we go, that's second gear synchronizer with the needle bearing. This is, it's first and second synchronizer, first gear bushing. So first gear bushing, let's go ahead and put with first gear. This is going to be second and first. Now we're going to do deal with second gear. So let's go grab some more bags. So now we're talking about second gear. Let's go ahead and put that in there. Label the second there. Can't do that because that goes on, that's larger, so this actually has to come off this way. So now we have to take off the snap ring uh, that's holding this on. But it looks like this will likely slip off before we do that. So, okay, the shift pieces are going to actually retain it the way it's supposed to. So we'll go ahead and grab the snap ring pliers and see about taking that off. I have not had good luck with snap ring pliers, just want you guys to know that. And there's that piece popping out. Okay. So we'll 
don't know what's up. There we go. Alright, so snap ring pliers. You guys know a better way to do this. I'm all ears, but. Okay, this one is too small for the one I've got here, so we'll try these ones. Actually did work. There's that one out. Go ahead and pull this whole piece out. Okay, so that's out. So that's actually the third fourth synchro hub is what we've just pulled out along with the third gear synchro. So that'll actually go side. So I wrote an O there uh, for out because that was towards the outside of the car, so towards fourth gear. third gear and synchro. So now we're going to try to get this snap ring off of the, what is this, the input shaft bearing? Okay. So I'm trying to pull this bearing off. I'm not really having a lot of luck. Well, we are almost completely free. bearing smells a little bit toasted but I don't know that, all right well like I said that Most of the bearings didn't. This one's got it like a little bit of a smell. Okay, now there were a couple like dots here that I don't see, which might mean that I lost them. Or I'm super lucky and they fell out in the bag I carried, and then I literally drop it. Um, fell out in the bag I carried it, so there's that one. There's supposed to be. was a steel ball. There's supposed to be another steel roller. Looks like underneath this one. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and 
opens up this back to the side here. And we'll get rid of this one, which is, I think the similar thing that we did on this one. Can I get this on here or does it need to be a different size? And I'm just trying to give myself the appropriate amount of leverage here without losing the whole piece. So we can get rid of this. So we can remove this. And it's working. You can probably go ahead like this and see if we can give you a little bit of a view here. So look how it's almost flush here. So as I Piece. It's moving. You really don't want to pull from the outside of a bearing. You really want to try to pull from the inside of the bearing, just like you want to push from the inside of a bearing. Or if it's going into a larger space, push on the outside. You don't want to put stress on these the ball bearings themselves. Let's go ahead and clean up my workspace and take a look at what we've got. Okay, let's do this nice and slow, and I'll call it a day. I have the counter shaft with the bearing removed and from the main shaft I removed first gear, second and first gear synchro, third gear, third and fourth gear synchro hub and uh, actually this is second gear I apologize for not putting that in the right order. So first gear, second and first synchro hub second gear itself, third gear, third and fourth gear synchro hub, then I've got fourth gear which is still sitting on the input shaft, and the main bearing, as well as, I already talked about that. So now that it's fully disassembled, I go ahead and take a look at all of the parts and then put it back together. I don't see anything wildly bad about any of these parts, so it is what it is. Thank you for watching.